workshop from start to finish, by now you'll have been through hundreds of years of the history of navigation. So let's have a look at a timeline of the history of navigation, going all the way back to around 3000 BCE in the Indo-Pacific region. Austronesian people spread from Taiwan off the coast of China into most of the islands in Southeast Asia, Micronesia, Polynesia, New Zealand, and even to Hawaii. They used many methods of navigation, including observing the movement of birds, looking at the stars, and using their knowledge of the waters to detect land nearby. They used star charts, stories, and songs to share and remember information. In Europe, Sailors in the Mediterranean had been using the stars to navigate since at least 1000 BCE. Phoenicians, people from the modern day areas of Lebanon and Syria, were excellent sailors and used a tool to measure the depth of water to estimate how far they were from shore. This same tool was used to collect sediments from the bottom of the ocean. The depth of water and the information from the sediments collected allowed expert sailors to figure out where they were. They were known to have sailed all the way to Senegal in West Africa, and the trade networks they set up are thought to be the foundation of the ancient Greek and ancient Roman civilizations. In medieval times, 400 to 1400 CE, the Arab Empire made huge contributions to navigation, using early versions of magnetic compasses and tools like the quadrant to determine latitude. Vikings are thought to have used Icelandic spar crystals, which they called sunstones, to work out where the sun was on cloudy days. The modern magnetic compass that we looked at in the first video was developed in China between 1040 and 1187 CE. It allowed navigators to continue on, or set a bearing, when they couldn't see the sun. For example, if it was cloudy or nighttime. In the 1200s in Italy, nautical charts started to appear, though their use spread very slowly, not appearing on English boats until almost 300 years later. In the 1400s, the Portuguese frequently crossed the huge expanses of the Atlantic, Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. Then we get up to 1714 and the Board of Longitude in Britain, who were offering huge money prizes for anyone who could more accurately determine longitude. In 1735, a clock was made that wasn't affected by the movement of a ship, and the first sextant was invented in 1757. Jump forward to 1891, and radios and telegraphs were appearing on ships. By 1904, ships were able to check that their clocks were accurate using radio signals. In 1906, ships were able to determine the direction using radio waves, and by 1907, the US was sending navigation warnings to ships at sea. In 1957, the first artificial satellite, Sputnik, was launched and opened the door to satellite navigation. The transit satellite system was up and running in 1962, allowing location pinpointing to about 25 meters. The US's Navstar satellites were orbiting Earth by 1985, providing GPS signals to people on the ground. Russia's own system, called GLONASS, was up and running with 24 satellites by 2011. And the European Space Agency had the Galileo Global Navigation Satellite System set up and live in 2016. Looking to the future of navigation, scientists are working on accuracy. The Galileo system is much more accurate than the US's GPS. It's accurate to one meter, whereas GPS is only accurate to three meters. Newer satellites are hoping to be even more accurate than that. Thank you for coming on this journey with us through the history of navigation. We hope it's helped you to see the importance of maths in technology we often take for granted and appreciate how impressive modern navigation is.